can't wear my rings right now because my hands full. I jammed two fingers yesterday. Oh my god. Well, Monday and yesterday. So I can't put my rings on today, but it's okay. But you. So welcome to the More Than Luck podcast. We are here and it's lit. We got. <laughs> Hey, we got free. Man, you know what I'm saying? We don't even want to introduce ourselves. Like, I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we on a whole nother vibe today. Yeah. Like, we got the infamous. Oh, my God. The illustrious. What? Come on with it. Okay. The prime the time. The devastate. Prime time. Oh my God. Y'all say prime time. Who? Hey. Y'all do prime so much. Time. Y'all do so much. Too much. Fred. D. Oh Come on God. with it. Introduce yourself, please. Let them know who you are. Let them know who you are. Yeah, but I don't think you've seen the pyramid on her wrist. Not you know, the I'm pyramid on my wrist and, and my neck. Oh, Let's do this because it is two hey, days I, after Founders Day. Go. It is. Hi, guys. What's up? Oh. Could you introduce yourself to our lovely? I am Frederica McGlown. I go by Freddie. I am an author. A motivational speaker and a life coach and a superhero too. Come on with it. I'm a superhero. Yes, I see the S on the chest. You know I try. <laughs> you know. Just don't tell hey. me. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I'm We've so been knowing you for a long time. I know. Um, you know I think I probably mm-hmm. for me like eight years. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And for Dan, with you? If you eight, then I'm. I don't know who was first. Jay was first. Yeah. Jay was first. So you you eight and I'm seven. Yeah, okay. like since seven. Like yeah. yeah. And I think since I've known you, like you've been on it. Like I think were you an RA at one point? Or you was on I was in LA. LA. So at least an assistant. I was yeah. on the mansion at one point. Yep. But you but at Oak Hall, you I was RHA president at Oak Hall. So, yeah. so then I'm like, okay, she about that business. Oh god. Oh, and she was. Oh, and god. she was a Delta too. So it's just like and that showed me that. that showed me what Hey, That's what right. what they look like? That's right. You know what I'm saying how to hold yourself. That's right. You know what I'm saying. So, could you talk about you know what you do? Um, so a little bit of what I do. So my nine to five is basically um, I'm a life coach. Mm-hmm. I am a life coach to people between the ages of 21. Well, my youngest student is 21. My oldest student is 80. And so at some point in their life, they dropped out of high school for whatever circumstances, whatever happened in their life, they dropped out and decided that you know life was too much at the moment. Um, So they wanted to focus on other things and so now they found themselves at the point in their life where they want to go back to high school and get their high school diploma. So like I said, my oldest student, 80 years old, um, we just graduated 52 graduates all together this past December. And Mm -hmm. so my oldest student that walked across the stage for that graduation was 70 years old. So imagine at 70 years old. We got to pop First off, we got to pop bottle. We got to pop bottle. Like, you know what I'm saying? You 70 something years old. Yes, you 70 getting a diploma. Like, yes. So... Just, it's, it's just beautiful to be able to motivate them, uplift them, um, make sure they stay on their grind, counsel them and those different things like that. So that's what I do for them. I'm just, you know, trying to be a superhero to my students. Right. And then outside of that, I'm an author. Mm. Y'all, I had a book come out last true. year. Like, true. when I tell y'all the average person that writes and self-publishes their own book sells about 100 copies. Y'all, when I tell y'all I'm at 1,200 copies. Come on. When I tell y'all I'm at 1,200 copies. Well, you know, St. Louis Public Schools, they use me as a part of the curriculum. Like, God is good, y'all. Like, God is good. So, I'm an author. Well, I do that. That's mm-hmm. my five to nine. That's my side hustle. And I got to also have another side hustle. So, I speak. And I've been speaking, y'all know that, since I was 16 Saints. years old. Right. Um, I travel the country. Just being a motivational speaker, I go to different colleges, high schools, things like that. They cut the check. I provide the inspiration. You got to have multiple streams of income. Y'all know that's important. That's so, way. toast we, it up. We, we got to toast it up. Out. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She out here doing too much. They got my favorite job. Just, my favorite. Yeah, that's the thing. And it's not bad. You, been, you, you ain't never had to do it. Hey, Jake. Did, did you have to do it with the pinky and her? You so extra. It felt right. Is it because it's the AKA Travis Day? No, you had to do it with the pinky. See, you do too much. Y'all was going to say what I was going to say. You don't know what I'm going to say. You don't know what I'm going to say. Hey, I love us. Hey, I love us. I love, us. I love uh, my Crimson and Cream brothers. I really do. I do. Shout out to Cap Appside. You yeah. know. Shout mm-hmm. out to us and only us. You know. We so dirty. Don't judge us. Don't hey, judge us. So, how do you actually do it though? Like, what were your mm-hmm. steps to getting there? Um, steps to getting to be an author. Or steps to getting to be, um. I think for me, just trying to figure out what it was that I wanted to do. I found myself at a standpoint, I had graduated from college. Mm -hmm. And I always tell my story, I graduated from college. I didn't know whether to go left or right. And this was undergrad at this point. I didn't know whether to go left or right. 
So I got into grad school. So I was like, okay, I thought I really was going to have it figured out once I graduated from grad school. Mm -hmm. And so then I still didn't have it figured out. But I was just surrounded by so many great black women who had instilled so much in me invested and invested so much into me to see me be great. And so sitting with them trying to figure out, first of all, for me, what's my purpose? Mm -hmm. I feel like the biggest thing that people go wrong is they chase a paycheck. But once you find your purpose and you can mix that with your passion, the money will come afterwards. So just trying to figure out like what was my purpose and I knew that my purpose was helping people. Whatever that looked like, mm -hmm. just being a part of somebody's grind, somebody's struggle and trying to help them get to the next place in their life was really big for me. And so that's how I started. I had a story I never forget. My final year of grad school, my final semester of grad school, I lost my graduate assistantship. I had so much going on. I was depressed. I was going through anxiety. I was just going through so many different things, and I lost my graduate assistantship. So at that point, I had to pay for school myself, had to pay for housing myself, had to pay for all of these things. And so I wanted a big kid job. And so I had a story where I had no idea what she did or like even who she was to the community. I happened to reach out to her like, hey, AP, Dr. Alice Prince, shout out. Um, I reached out to her, Dr. Alice Press, like, I'm interested in working with kids, like, mm -hmm. young people and impacting their lives. Mm -hmm. And she like, girl, come on down here and you got this job tomorrow. Just fill out this application. Went down there, literally got the job. And that's how I jumped into the whole social services scene. Mm -hmm. And so I transitioned out of that. And became a life coach when Merce Goodwill opened up this this um, high school, this adult high school. I got into life coaching people. Like that was so important for me to be able to say I'm a part of your journey because I'm your life coach. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's to me is one of the most prestigious jobs I ever had because you have somebody life in your yeah, you hand. Your steps. Like that's crazy. <laughs> like you have somebody life in your hand. Like whenever they going through anything, and I know you can speak to this because you've been a mentor and Jay the same thing. Like y'all are affecting somebody's life, life. life. and. So for me, like I've used that as my platform to get to my next steps, which is to be an author. Like I put that all together. Like, and for those who go out and get my book, it is available on Amazon. Oh, you don't get, you don't get <laughs> it is available on Amazon, but it is a compilation of quotes for African American black girls to motivate them and inspire them to get to their next level. So I took all these gems that my sisters had dropped in me and put them in a book to give them to somebody else because everybody don't get a Delta Sigma Theta background. Everybody don't get a loving mentor. Everybody don't get somebody, you know what I'm saying, that um, pours into them. So I wanted to be able to provide a tool of what everybody had instilled in me and give it to somebody else's child. And so I leveraged my life coach, you know, platform to go ahead and get into you know, being an author, and then I've been speaking since I was 16, y'all. Like, I've literally then spoken the Cajun Dome, 13,000 people, like, giving inspiration to 13,000 people when I was 16 years old. So, like, to be able to take all of those experiences and, think, and, and experience and stuff and put that inside of a book for somebody else's child, like, just using each opportunity to get to my next level. And I ain't stopped, and I'm not going to stop. Don't and stop. greatness lies ahead, so mm -hmm. that's what it is, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, because like our work, let's, I was with elementary kids first. Yes. And then marketing and all that good jazz, hospitality. And then I ended up doing the schools. Yes. Getting to the schools with Freddie. Super hero. I slate, like, mm -hmm. on some, like, you know what, man, you should do this. You know what I'm saying? Very yeah. close person's like, nah, you need to do this. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And at that point, I was like, all right. And I was on the, I was on the bad street. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I was making it, but it was hard. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So at that point, I was like, all right, we're going to transition. We got to transition into to what people been saying anyway. Yeah. From counselors, like, hey, look, you just need to talk to people. You, like, your, your best grades is in teaching stuff. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. your best stuff is in, in psychology and criminology. All right, mm -hmm. you need to just go on and do that. And then, man, did the superhero training. Yep. Worked with the kids. Kind of really felt like, all right, this this is a no fluff zone. Like yeah. we we got we got to put some fire under they under they ass. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Period. And and say like, nah, like I'm not saying you ain't got a bad situation. I'm not right. knocking that. But you the only reason like you're not doing something right now. Absolutely. So like once you once you tell yourself you're gonna do it, you take your action. You say, all right, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And then you take accountability in the good, bad, the ugly, and you sit there and say, all right, bet. Yeah. And then our kids, man, they was raw kids. <laughs> I'm like, you know what I'm saying? No, no, yeah. like, ain't no they, was, they was rough kids. 
and genuinely trying to j- just get the high school diploma at that point, like not even the GED, like they getting the full high school diploma. Right. So they going through the full classes, ACT, all that. So we like, all right, we got to be raw mm-hmm. to let you know that like genuinely you can do this. Yeah. But you got to want yourself out your situation and put yourself around the right people yeah. that'll, that'll build you up to do it. Yeah. And then she, yeah, she left me and I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> she was gone high. Right. And then people like Shakima, man, Sylvester, yeah. shoot, man, you know what I'm saying? Like all of them people were people that we worked with that had great energy and intentions behind what they did. It wasn't about the money. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like, you know what? We're going to dedicate this time. Yeah. Yeah. And from there, like you said, like, I've always wanted to do the school stuff and be yeah. like, all right, I want to find my place at Umsu. That's the alma mater. And I want to touch and bring that black community to the T back to yes. what it was. You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> like what it was. Jesus. Like Yeah. They just, they just missing a lot of genuineness. I feel yeah. like it's just cut and dry straight through and you you missing a networking piece of building that yeah. even gives you the time to be mentored. Yeah. Have these kids ain't even giving the time to be mentored. No. Like they just going to school, I am out and I think I got my own life that was already in place and yet you're trying to be better. So that mm-hmm. requires something different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, and then Jay, sheesh, man, same deal. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We, when I found out he was a, a part of our, I think, schools, and we, we did send some kids or something there, um, and he was doing that, I was like, oh, snap, bro. Like, he, yeah. he, uh, he on their side, too. He, yeah. he hit the kids, and he telling me about his stories. I'm like, bro, yeah. they doing the same. Hey, on me. Yeah. I, we, we on the same stuff and didn't even trip, because yeah. we was all in tri- job transitions at that point. Yeah. Like. Jim yeah. trying to find something like he was grinding, was doing security, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah. So on your journey where you've been, um, what are some things you got to look out for? Like the cost, you know what I'm saying? Meaning like mm-hmm. the sacrifice yeah. you know what I'm saying? to put into it. Because a lot of, because now let me, now let me say this. Because, you know, as we grew up, people above us or older than us, it's like, okay, it takes hard work and dedication. Mm-hmm. But what does that actually look like? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody might think that might be okay, I put one hard worker. But no, it takes a lot more just to just to get in front. Yeah. You feel me? So what you know what I'm saying, what was the cost for you? Like what did you have to realize you had to sacrifice yeah. to be able to, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, this is what I need to be. And it right. has to make sense. Right. One of the things I always say is short term sacrifice for long term gain. You gotta be willing to sacrifice some things in order to see what that ending result will look like and for me a lot of times and people joke about it or and however it may be but sacrifice comes in the form of sleep sometimes yeah. it's gonna be some early mornings and some late nights the millionaires are up before the sun is up every morning you know what i'm saying and so for me i would find myself a lot of time when i was working in my previous job like i would be at work at six o'clock in the morning and leave work at eight or nine o'clock at night but you know i did a six to nine but then after that I had to be working on what I needed to work on for me. And I always say, don't ever work harder for your nine to five than you do your five to nine. Like, I'm not finna give my all to somebody else's company and give my company nothing at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where people mess up or people go wrong. I think the biggest sacrifice for me was sleep. I think another big sacrifice for me was, you know, relationships. I didn't get the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? And people don't realize that you all hung up on this, my bae, this, my this, this, my that. Like, I have been in so many situations, like even graduating from, you know, uh, college. And I found myself in this relationship or this relationship. And it didn't work because people were like, well, you don't have the time to give me. No, because I'm busy building my empire. Like, if you can't support me in that, then, you know, catch me on the flip side. But Mm -hmm. sacrificing my relationships, sacrificing my time, my sleep, that's when you talk about, like, you really in it to win it at the end of the day. Like, you got to be willing to compromise or give up something in order for greatness to begin to happen for you. And a lot of people, they ain't got there yet because they ain't trying to give up nothing. And it's like... You ain't got there yet because what are you willing to give up? You know what I'm saying? I ask God, I will never forget it. Every year I have a word that I speak positive of over my life. Every single year. I've done this since about, what, 2016, 2017. My word in 2017 was to be uh, holistic. I needed to be more whole in the different areas of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, Last year, so last year was 2018 was purpose. I needed my purpose. I needed to figure out what my purpose was so I can mix that with my passion and get that paycheck. I needed that. But last year, my word was elevation. Mm -hmm. No, my word last, yes, my word last year was elevation because my word this year is success. 
elevation. It wasn't even three months into the new year. I knew that I had to sacrifice some things to elevate because one of my biggest things I always say is everybody can't go. Everybody can't go to the top with you. Everybody ain't, ain't <laughs> built to go to the top with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, lonely. it's lonely at the top. Like, everybody can't go with you. And it wasn't even three months into the year I got this phone call about being um, one of the brand ambassadors for Umsel's I Chose Umsel campaign. Mm -hmm. And like, three months into the year, I'm looking at myself on Highway 64, 270, and 170 in a billboard driving down the highway just on my regular, on my way to work. And if that ain't elevation, I don't know what it is. But people don't understand how much stuff I had mm -hmm. to let go to get there. Mm -hmm. Like how much stuff I had to let go to get there. Mm -hmm. Same year, I'm I'm launching a book, my first mm -hmm. book. Who ever thought I would be writing a book? You know what I'm saying? But it's just so many things I had to I had to sacrifice to get to that point. And if you ain't willing to sacrifice, you ain't ready for success. Ready for you ain't ready for it yet. Cause you gotta be willing to give something up at the end of the day. Like, and that was just one of my biggest things with time, relationships, friendships. I love my best girlfriends to death, but we don't talk every day. You know, yeah, when you're in right. college, yeah, yeah. You talk to the same people every day. I can go across the street to your apartment. I can pull up to you and, you know, D house. Yep. When y'all had everything going on, me and Nick was joking before we started. You know, we shared we the same share wall. wall. Mm -hmm. We see each other every day. We study every day. But when you graduate from college, you don't see these people every day. My homegirls moved to different parts of the yes. country. Yes. So we ended up meeting up with each other when we would go to Vegas yes. or we would go to Miami or we would kick it. But not to say that I sacrificed the relationship where it fell to the side, but I sacrificed that time of talking to them every day. Because everybody on a different path. Everybody got something else going on. Mm -hmm. So we can't talk to each other every day. We can't kick it with each other every day. Because everybody got a goal in mind. So that was something that I had to sacrifice that everyday communication with my core group. Like, I talk to my mama now. Like, I talk to my mama once a week. I love, anybody know me, I love my mama and my grandmama. I used to talk to my mom and grandmama every day, but that's something that I had to sacrifice. And they understand on Sundays at four o'clock, she gonna call. She ain't got no Delta stuff, whatever. She gonna call on this day at this time. But that's something I had to sacrifice too, because I'm not where I want to be yet. Yeah, so man. I have to keep right. figuring out, keep like, focused. keep focusing and stay grinding. Because Freddie talking that shit. I'm sorry. Hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I ain't gonna lie, we gotta take a break. I'm sorry, y'all. Because that was. So much knowledge that, that I hope y'all writing this down for me. <laughs> like this, this, this is some real talk. This, this. Put it like this: people pay for this. They do. Facts. Yeah. Like so, to say the least. Like we giving you gems, like straight from the person, just live and direct, saying like, hey. Yeah. Like, and this, this, is, this is just little snippets, but people pay for this. Yeah. So absolutely. like, take heed of how success is happening and the struggles that you genuinely got to go through, and like, you can't blame nobody no more. Ain't no excuses. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, those events happen in your life, understood. Acknowledge them, correct whatever pain that you got to correct. But the reality is, if you're still trying to get to the bag, you're still trying to get to your passion, what your purpose is, you're going to have to let that go and say, like, let, let me fix me. And I can't yeah. tell nobody else that they the reason that I am the way I, they are. I am. Ooh, absolutely. And that's so much facts because, you know, you look at it and you try to see how we got to where we are, you, we really had to sacrifice. You had to yeah. sacrifice, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> when, just me trying to get back to St. Louis, I really yeah. had to sacrifice everything. Like, okay, if I'm going to do this, if I want to get back to St. Louis, I have to really take care of business at home. Yeah. Right. And once I realized you can't help nobody else, yep. if you don't help yourself out first, come on. then you ain't going to get nothing no done. Way. Nothing. Nope. And that's where you actually fall into, you know, depression because you think other people are going to support you like you support them. Absolutely. But I learned you can't expect you no. out of nobody. Absolutely not. Because once you do that, you're going <laughs> to fail every time. Yep. And once you once you start putting people in places where they can succeed, succeed. Yes. Yes. that's where you can start yes. living life a lot better as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So, you know, that was... Do you have a you know a certain passage, a favorite passage in the book that you you know you want to talk about? So one of my favorite things in the book is two things. My first one is stay ready so you never have to get ready, mm -hmm. and my second one is if you fail to prepare, you That's prepare crazy. to fail. Those are my two. Those are my two. Hey, no, no, listen. Those we, are we, my we two. Are, we, we listen. So I, we, you, do, I, you got no? I like threes. <laughs> you like three. So I, I guess another one would be is trust the process. Just real simple. Mm -hmm. Trust the process. Yeah. You got to trust that whatever it is, whatever divine 
whatever it is that you believe in, it's you got to trust that it's a process and it's going to work itself out for the greater good mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And I just, one of my biggest things I always say all the time is if you're going to pray, if you're going to worry, don't pray. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to pray about it. Let it be what it's going to be. Hey, what, what, and let God be God. Let God be God. Let God be God. I just hope you're prepared. I just hope I'm prepared. But I always say that, too. Because we go around and we ask God for certain things. Mm -hmm. But we ain't prepared when he drops it on us. So when I pray, I ask, I need you to prepare me for this. I need you to get me ready for this yeah. because I ain't going to come to you and I'm going to ask you for this job or ask you for this extra income and I don't know what to do with it when you give it to me. Prepare me to receive yeah. it. Equip me with whatever I yeah, need I to receive it sanctuary. at the end of the day because if I ain't ready to handle it, I'm going to fumble. I'm going to mishandle and mm -hmm. I... I, I and that might drop you far too much back. Exactly. This one might drop back two steps back. Exactly. But the thing about it is, too many people depend on me at the end of the day. Because it's not, y'all, we sit at this table, y'all. It's so much bigger than us. Yes. It's so yes. much bigger than yes. us. Yes. So many lives are affected by the work that Jay does and the work that Jay will do. Or the work that you do, Nick, and the work that you will do in the future. You know what I'm saying? Like, too many lives. We can't drop the baton. Well, like, people don't understand that. Like, it's bigger than you. Know, yeah. So you got to be prepared when God drop it on you. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to do what I need to do with it. And that that's important. That's but important. That's definitely important. So what would you say your life is like, you know, from before, like in the middle and then now? Like what what has the what does it look like? Um in the beginning, so like for me, like when you, when I heard beginning, I heard growing up. Mm -hmm. And I look at my mother was a single mother. And my father was very much, he was he was a part of my life, but my mama, you know, my mom was the person that was there. But my grandmama raised me. So we didn't have a whole bunch growing up. Mm -hmm. Like, and I ain't never afraid to tell nobody I come from too much of nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was y'all yeah. know me, yeah. I was born yeah. in the 618. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was educated in East St. Louis School District 189. But the biggest thing that my grandmama always placed on me is education is first. You know, my grandmama graduated from high school and my mama did. They didn't go to college, so I was a first-generation college student. Wow. And so, go to college at the end of the day. Graduate from high school, get your diploma at the end of the day, and make something of yourself. And that has guided me my whole life, which is why I ended up going to college. You know what I'm saying? I went back to go get my master's. And Lord's willing, I'm going to go back and get my doctorate. But, like, those are things that they pressed upon me and instilled in me that still have guided me to today. You know what I'm saying? And like those middle phases of my life, going to college, and you guys know very much so, like, you know, I would like to say I was a cool kid in school. You know what I'm saying? I was Greek. I was Greek. You know, I, I was a leader in Delta, not only for my chapter, but I led Delta nationally. You know, when we turned 100, when we turned 100, like, I was the regional representative of Delta. And for those who don't know, like, that is the second highest ranking official in Delta for the region and one of the top, you know, seven spots in Delta overall. And so when we turned 100, I was in and out of every city. Imagine being that young and you traveling every weekend. I walked in the Tournament of Roses, Rose Bowl Parade one week. I reenacted the Women's Suffrage March down Pennsylvania Avenue one week. Every week in 2013, I was in and out of town. So, like, for a little girl who came from nothing, yeah. didn't know what traveling looked like, so to, you know, in and out, her suitcase, her packing this, her... And, you know, being surrounded by so many women that instilled in me and loved on me and made sure that when I sat down at the table with the big dogs that I had the same plate they had. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying, made sure that I was suited and booted and made sure I had the same suit they had next mm -hmm. to them. Like, that was what was so important for me. And I want to be able to provide them opportunities for somebody else, baby, who didn't mm -hmm. have it growing up. You know what I'm saying? And when I look at myself now, I don't look at myself. People on the outside look at me as successful. I don't look at myself as successful because I ain't made it to where I want to make it to yet. Exactly. I ain't there yet. Like, people look at you all the time and be like, this like, is You don't women. even know what's really going on. You don't like, even know geez. what that looks like. I was crying yesterday. Crying. <laughs> I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. <laughs> Got the wrong package. Come on. Come on. Speak. Speak. I still so struggle with the brand. the wrong design. <laughs> but I still got to sell it. Correct. I got to sell it. Correct. I got to sell it. I got to sell it. 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 Sell it
Damn it, I didn't it already. But that, but that makes you so much more of an entrepreneur because you gotta learn how to flip. Yep. 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 All the time. Yep. All the time. So what do you think, you know, wasn't needed on that, you know, on that journey that you thought was needed? I think everything that God gave me was what I needed. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there was anything that was not necessary. Because if there would have been anything that was not needed, it wouldn't have been present. Mm -hmm. I feel like every hater, every closed door, every lost opportunity, every fallen relationship or situationship, God gave me because there was a lesson that I, need to learn. that I needed to learn. And there was a blessing in that lesson. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I always say this all the time. People be like, oh, you could take the win or you could take the L. The L for me ain't the loss. The L for me is still the lesson. Mm, that's a At the end of the day. And I feel like everything that happened, it happened because it was supposed to. And like God be telling you, what, what, what the, we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Because I think for me, like, I feel like I didn't have to go, have to go out like that. Like to network, but I'm not mm -hmm. really networking. I'm just being out. I think that's something that, like the social engagement, it wasn't as important because mm -hmm. all the all the people ain't your friends, and that's why I had to learn. Child. When I learned all the people that laugh in your face, they really ain't your friends. Child. I should have been listening a long time ago, yeah. and that's how I missed out on the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just feel like if that's some, that's something I I mean if we had regrets, yeah, I, I definitely you know what I'm saying take care of other things before I you know what I'm saying decided to go out and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so, gee, man, boy, look, I'm like, I'm just like, I ain't like, like, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 we don't talk as often, right? Yeah. yeah. But like, it's an understanding and a respect off rip as soon as you come in the room. And like, that's such, you know what I mean? Like, period. And it's, it's different kind of like genuinely having like, all right, like, this is exactly what we talk about. Typically, we naturally in it, but it's a difference when we like, hey, no, this is the topic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it get deeper. It get like, yeah. hey, you know what? This is more tunnel vision. This is more focused. It's yeah. like, hey, nah, like this is exactly what I was going through. Yeah. Because there's some stuff that we don't talk about that we be going through. No. And it's like, you'll see me when I made it out. <laughs> I got Correct. it. Correct. You'll see me when I made it out. Correct. But Jay made a good point too. Like, people that you think your friends ain't your friends. Like, people don't understand when you start a business. When you mm -hmm. say, this is an LLC, this uh -huh. is my business, and so, you're providing a. Happen. I don't know what's about to happen. We're going to because I promise you. Listen, 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 When you are starting an LLC or a business and you're providing a product or a service, the people that you think don't support you don't be the ones that support you. It's the person that's on Facebook that you don't know that's buying your stuff and supporting you. It ain't your friends sometimes. When I tell you, when I had my first international sale, child, child I said, I said, I shipped to Kuwait. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Don't talk to me. Won't he do Don't talk it? To me. Won't he do I it? I said, some of these people, it, is, it ain't for everybody apparently, and that's okay. Yep. Yes. But when it touch, it's going to touch, and they're going to love the designers, they're going to get the meeting, they got doggy. When y'all see me doing these conferences, you're going to know exactly what we're talking about. Yes. It's just, and, yes. I, and that's why I think it's so important to expand your brand. And, yeah. what, and you know, the next question, like, what does that actually look like? Because for, for us, like, we go out and, like, hand to feet, like, this is what we yes. do in every city we go to, or yeah. in St. Louis. But a lot of people don't think it's that. They might yeah. think it's, oh, I got to post this. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I got friends that, you know, say yeah. they're going to post this, but they never do. Yeah. So how important do you think and what does that actually look like to expand your brand? To expand your brand for me. So when I first got into all of this, I didn't know what having a brand really was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like awesome. people have like this detailed marketing plan and this detailed like for me, I never really knew what that was and I never really ventured into that piece. My brand was just me myself, just making sure I upheld a positive reputation that if I talked about it, I was about it. I was walking the same walk that I was talking about. And people don't understand too when you talk about branding, you got to be consistent. If your way of reaching people is through social media, you got to be consistent with that. People got to be able to go back and say, I know every day Jay going to post something or I know every because people going to hold you to that standard and that's one of the reasons why you know I love social media but social media don't do it for me personally because I ain't reached the point where I'm consistent with that yet because once you reach that point people gonna be counting on you to always post or always have this 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 but for me my brand 
it's just the life that I live and the things that I do put on social media and give people insight in my personal life. I think one of the biggest things I always tell people all the time is social media don't get the right to see me see me cry or see me in a, a somber space. But that doesn't mean that I can't be transparent in my struggle okay. and let you know my last semester of grad school, I failed. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm a young black woman who's struggling in the workplace, working under, you know, people that don't look like me. Because it's hard as hell being a black black, black face in a white space. Mm -hmm. So we don't talk about that. So I can be transparent with you and put those things out there. And then for me, you gravitate towards me because... We mm -hmm. lit, we, I'm genuine, mm -hmm. I'm transparent, and I'm living the same life. One of my favorite superheroes, I always say this. There's a, there's two girls. Super Scent, Super Scent is the CEO mm -hmm. of the Crayon Case. Yep. It's a makeup uh, manufacturing company. And the real BB Judy, Jessica DuPart, she's the CEO of Kaleidoscope Hair Products. Mm -hmm. And they have gotten on so hard because their brand in the beginning was just being genuine. Just just going live on social media and me hearing, you know, you in your everyday cuss like a sailor. Yep. In your oh everyday God. just oh being God. you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they attracted so many followers and so many people just off of strength of that. And then they created a product and built a brand around that, crayons and colors and all of these different things. And then people had already knew them. But just so being there. So it was an easy transition. So it was an easy transition. So for mm -hmm. me, I don't think much in the whole branded thing. I just think about being me and just being my authentic self. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. real. That's really real. All right. So we're about to do the Spitfire round. Bam. Oh my God. Fix it, Jesus. Yeah, come on in this room. I'm ready. All right. Is there anybody you would like to meet or work with? Bam. Oh my God. I would like to meet and work with. The two of them, Jessica Dupart, the real BB Judy, and uh, Super Scent, uh, Raynell Stewart of the Crayon Case. I got you. That's the best. All right, bet. Um, if you were going to be in any type of movie, what would it be? Oh, Lord Jesus. I would like to be in some type of romance movie. I'm a hopeless Jeez, romantic. A hopeless I'm a Virgo romantic, woman. Bro. I'm a Virgo woman, so I'm a hopeless romantic. So would you be the one? Something. The, in the romance or just to yes. play another romance? No, no, I would be in the romance. Him. Like, I right. just want to be the one that's wooed at the end and just yeah, find love and my happily ever after. Y'all know me so okay. real. Shut wow. up. Wow, okay. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Shut up, Jack. <laughs> Shut up. So what is the first thing you do or think of when you wake up in the morning? Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. All right, how the code? Mm -hmm. Cold. Emos or pie? Emos. Sounds like the right answer. Emos. <laughs> you from East I, I don't care. care. So, so East St. Louis ain't got a new pizza? We got emos. <laughs> You one of them people. You just such I'm a hater. We had better pieces. Yeah. Whatever. It's just, Giordano's fine too. Like when you talk about Chicago yeah, style people and yeah, all that, that. That type of sauce ain't sweet. Yeah, that but I can't sweet. do pie. Like that. Yeah. Look, that's too much. Too much. Yeah, it's too much. Give me my little cracker and cheese and Boy, I'll do it. But they don't put no sugar in they in they. You know what I'm saying? The sauce. So it's, Who it's, don't? Emos? Oh, pie. pie. They yeah. can't do it. They don't. Emos don't put enough sugar in there. Nah, you crazy. You crazy. And they just put all cheese. What is the protocol? Pro Okay. What's your favorite pair of shoes of all time? Oh, wow. I love Steve Madden's. Fact. I'm a huge Steve Madden's girl. I've always been a huge Steve Madden's you got girl. Favorite, favorite Steve Madden's? Oh, I went to my 25th birthday. Y'all was all there. They were like these blinged out Steve Madden's and they were so bad. They were like at least about six inches you still got platform. Come I do now. still got them shoes. When the last time you wore them? Oh, it's been a uh, while. Yeah, you want to because that's what they do. It's, it's, they just, just sitting there just, in the hey, just like my real shoes. shoes. We sitting there. Just just sitting and then you say, well, this was an event shoe. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. That was, my, was, that was my 25th birthday shoe. Yeah. So that was six years ago. Uh -huh. Shit, I put them shoes on a long time. So. All right, so what's your, what's your favorite drink? Yeah. I'm right on sour. I'm sorry. Okay. No, you're good. And yeah. then cupcake. Uh, cupcake, yeah, facts. Yes. Facts, facts, facts. What's your favorite sports thing? Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Tony Gucco, uh, Randy Brown, you know, 90s Lizzie all day, all, you know, all day, 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 Steve Kerr, all day. Nah, absolutely not. No, 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 just, I just want to be able to lay hands on you. Cancel free. Say, no. touch the. Oh, I 
Not even okay. a garment. Child, <laughs> if only I was able to do that. Come on now. The world would be You're not dead yet. No. Come on. Just, You're good. Come on. Come put, on back. Put your hands together. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that it? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand y'all. Y'all so ignorant. Hey, did, you have, did you have another two five you wanted? Yeah. Y'all want, want to switch mine? Yeah, did you want another one? What was yours? If you had another one. Uh, I want to repeat mine. Yeah. That's so dirty. No, it's not. It is dirty. You just want to sit across somebody that's staring at you and just read like... So I can make sure that like <laughs> this want. shit is genuine. And oh, if I want to make it happen, then I'll know how to make whatever I need. And see how fucked up somebody is. And, and I wouldn't even, and I wouldn't even want to read his mind. Like all that the one fucking is unorthodox, other but that dirty book has been that amazing one? for the twenty-seven years I've been on this earth. Fix it, Jesus. Okay, Fix it. it has helped me. I have helped people, and God is on my side. So my first one was teleport. Was okay. So I, so I can pop up. No, let's. We're not. <laughs> yes, I want to say don't. No. <laughs> We should. I should have just entered that and stopped this moment because you. I, and my second, second one was trash. And I don't know where it came it was from. Trash. It's weak as hell. Turn out the light. You can see Jay. Glow <laughs> <laughs> in the dark. See, see, see. Young sir. Young sir. Young sir. You just want to go in the dark? No. I, I don't know why. No, I don't know why. He didn't have a purpose. It just came right. You want to go in the dark? He wouldn't even be able to find his purpose. Now I would be invisible. I could. I could be on the fly on the wall because I would love to hear some of the shit people oh, say man. about me. I would love to know um, that. Like I, I could just fly in your house, be a fly on the ceiling fan, on the top little spin thing, just to hear what goes on. Absolutely, I could do that. So hold on. Okay, so it's two different things, though. You want to be the fly on the wall, and, and or do you want to be an invisible fly on the wall? Because if they see you, they pop in your ass. I'm kidding. Not if I'm on the top of the ceiling fan on one of the little they ain't see things. They're not gonna see me. They're like, oh, it's a fly up there, man. Yes. No. Not if I'm. They're in. not gonna be worried about you. No, hey. not happening. Flies. I need to get in and get out. Fly. I just said that. But black people do. Touche. Touche. Just saying. I know All right. If you were stuck on the island with three things, what would you make? Bam. What would you do? What would you do? My we just gonna let her talk however she wants to talk. We ain't gonna give no parameters, no nothing. We just wanna see what My she cell does. phone, because I hope they got some service, because I need to be able to call. Oh, no, Jay, you do not take nothing away from her. Okay. Cell phone. I need some food. I need to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I need something to be able to start a fire. So, I some wood or some matches. Okay. I gotta be a little warm. The ocean get a little cold. And but the thing is, you stranded. I'm stranded. Like you don't. Have I ain't to. never getting off. See now, see now. You got. You can't get There's off. The debate. But what are you going to do to get off? On what? Right. That's are, you going to, are you waiting to get caught? That's Jay's issue. Cause Jay. So I can't have my cell phone to call nobody. You have your cell phone. See, and that's Jay being. So do I need a boat? Like what? It's up to you. I what did a boat to get out? Like, like, well, what did y'all bring? Help me help myself. What did y'all bring? Have we ever asked this no, question? Asked this what question. would you? Wow, what would you bring? Well, in that case, it, I would definitely bring a boat because I know how to paddle. Okay. Okay. Um, I would bring. I would want you know a special lady with me. Okay. Because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. If at all else fails, we can make your family here. <laughs> exactly. Say, it'll start off with three. Well, two. Then yeah. it'll be three. Possible four if we do it right. Yeah. Everybody needs to get off at some point. I, I would want a case of ammo to shoot SOS off. So people, you know what I'm saying? Who thinks of that? A case of ammo. Virgo, who thinks of that? That's another Virgo. Okay, listen. <laughs> and that's how I would survive. See, I'm bringing the plane because I actually know how to fly a plane. Do you know how to fly a plane? Yeah, yeah, I know how to. Yes, you do. He do. He does. Mm -hmm. What plane did you fly? Oh, um, you know what I'm saying? A very special person named Lucky Man. She took me to get flight hours and stuff. So I absolutely know how to at least get to some damn lane. I can glide the fuck out of it or yes. get that bitch up and I know how to get that mug in there. Yes. We'll figure out the rest from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know how to get in the air and keep it up there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude who taught me. So I, I remember that. Okay. And then, yes. you know what I'm saying? By the time I actually ended up on the stranded yes. plane yes. island, I don't yes. know how to fly fly for real. Yes. It's, but if, you, if the plane goes down in the water, you're done. N not necessarily. 
Cause you can go up. Planes automatically come with certain stuff. We got black box, we got all kinds of shit. Trust me, I'll get to a place before to get some. Mm. Hey, Roger, <laughs> I've gone off course. <laughs> I'm currently in between three rocks. They look like Mandela. Yes, they are Mandela. Uh, look like Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Y'all are crazy. And then I'd have some good. I'd have food while I'm there. Unlimited supply. You can't tell me I can't have unlimited supply. I can't say that. Um, and from there, man. Um, I probably, I probably, you see, I can bring anything. I'm bringing me a mobile fucking home. You need a whole mobile. Okay, I like that. A mobile I home. I like that. Said so if all those fails, damn it, I'll swim back to this bitch and I got me a crib. <laughs> I'm Gucci. But if you had the home on the water. Ooh, 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 we talking stupid shit. We ain't playing this game. <laughs> Y'all so ignorant. Y'all is so it don't matter. It don't matter at that point. When the lights are gonna look like uh, uh when it's nighttime, we ain't got no light. Child. What, what, what was the uh the uh cartoon Nickelodeon the uh Wild Thornberry? The Wild Thornberry boy, I have that bitch right there. Yeah. <laughs> right there, <laughs> right there, <laughs> right there. That a Scooby machine. Scooby right there. Right there. I'll tell I tell you what. Head ass. Y'all so ignorant. All right, if you could work with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be? Go for it. With no language barrier, no language. Oh yeah, that's right. We did add that. No Work with anybody, barrier. dead or alive. With no language barrier. So y'all talk one language, and you knew exactly what they were saying. No language barriers. If I could work with Dr. King. Okay. 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 Dr. King. Okay. Dr. King. Okay. Weekends or weekdays? Weekdays. Weekdays. Okay. Yeah. How big? <laughs> Fix it, Jesus! <laughs> so, where does this go from here? Only goes up. Oh, right. so, so, how big is it that you bring the type of cultural influence that you do to like your society, your hometown? How big is it for me that like, I bring? What does it mean to you to be able to give back to your hometown? Mm -hmm. Child, it means everything to me. One of the biggest things that I plan to do this year is. I want to create scholarships for college students who are in college, but they need a little extra coin to maybe go back the next semester. Mm -hmm. Because I we, to do that. a lot the of us, you already know that exactly. Yeah. But I want to be I want to be able to create that for them because you know going to the next level, you know you may not have as much funds or yeah. something may happen. And you More? need to go back mm -hmm. or you may need to get some books. I want to be able to do that, and then for students to go off to college, I need to. I want to create get um, a send off chest with everything oh, that they I need mean, in yeah. it. I want to be able to do a few of those, but that's so important to me to be able to give back. And my ultimate long term goal, I love this, and I go back to the two of them, Judy and Super. They both from New Orleans. They were able to pack out the Superdome and give away toys, and they broke the Guinness Book of World Records mm. uh, for the most toys given out to needy families over the Christmas season. Not this past year, but before that. So I always joke yeah, with cool. my best friend all the time, and we want to do it, the two of us together, for Chicago, her yeah. hometown. Okay. And then okay. I want to do it yeah, for Illinois. St. Louis and East, East St. Louis. Louis. And so that's my biggest thing. It's so important to, to give back, though. Like, yeah. it's so important. And then to do it for the culture, that's even more important. Too many people are trying to stifle our voices. Too mm -hmm. many people are trying to rip off the culture. Too many people are trying to, you know, have the, all of these different things. And it's so important that I'm able to be out there and be loud and proud and just be who I am and be able to empower other black women to be their authentic selves and be great in it. So that just means so much to me. That's right. We got the network. Like, network. What you said? Like, off the record, you want to do a pop up shop indicator? Yeah, we can't actually. We can't actually. Off the record. We might just do that this weekend. Okay. Yeah, don't ah, fuck. Let me get my back. See you What time? I mean, the cable only, you know, and not as far as Atlanta. Because I work when, I mean, Saturday. Mm, you work Saturday. That's my issue. Oh, okay. Well, we can't do Atlanta anyways. Yeah, yeah. It's my team Saturday. It's all good. So, how would you like to be remembered? <laughs> how would you like to be remembered? Somebody who made a difference. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest thing. Like I wanted to leave a legacy behind. That's I want it. I want my grandkids to and my great great kids like, to be proud of what know, I did. That's your granddaddy. 
Absolutely. <laughs> like, right. I, 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 I need grandma. you to be reading about your grandma no, like in school. Like I need your grandma to be in the history books. Like that's my goal. That's a difference. It's a difference when you're working for that though. Yeah. I'm saying that legacy is real. Hustling for your last name. Like yes. Genuinely saying like yes. That's why high school. That was me. I was like, bro. So if I don't do nothing else, I'm gonna be remembered. Yeah. Cool. I need to make sure I got enough pictures in this joint. Enough autograph. I need to know that's done. College came in same way. Like yeah. I'm like, yo, we gotta we gotta make uh, be remembered. Yeah. And like whatever that's gonna look like, we'll figure that out. And I, I think we helped. did just that. Oh, facts. Uncle Fam did just Uncle that. Fact. Like like let's let's, let's keep just, it one hundred. Like y'all made me feel like I, you know what I'm saying, bro. I've been here for ten years. You yeah. Know? And yeah. So like y'all are the ones that kept me at until maybe when I actually come back. Yeah. So, like I was in between like when I had. A, Take off that year of school. My mom wanted me to stay in Illinois. Yeah, and it was like, well, I better figure it out because I was yeah. going to either Edwardsville or Carbondale. Yeah, and it's like I wanted to get back to St. Louis because I knew the family that I had here, yeah. and it was worth sacrificing yeah. everything sacrifice. I needed to get back. Yeah, and so we had, but we held each other accountable. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, I think we did just that. Yeah, so we have a new segment. Okay, and it's called when you posted this. <clears throat> What did it mean? Oh, you you have your own? I got some. I oh, think I got yeah. some. Chad? You know it ain't gonna be Am bad. I nervous? Oh, I might want to fill up my kids up. Fill up the cup. You know what I'm saying? You might want to get the, the get cup. Get your sister you know over here. Because we got this Freddie Love. If you ain't even know, okay? Now, I thought this this is a champagne, actually. Like a champagne yeah. wine, ain't it? It's got it's, see, it's, it's a dessert it's wine. A dessert it's a, wine. Yeah, it is a dessert wine. Cause That's, it's, it's super sweet. Cause it's just like cause what we you giving us the meal. Oh, child, I'm trying. Ooh. I'm trying. Ooh. Okay. And it's a dessert. You feel me? They just can't have it. See, this, this, this one I like this one. Where were you at? You can read it out loud. We're going to post that joint Aww. right there. Okay. Somewhere. It'll be there. Bam. Okay. So it says, another black woman is never my competition. I am my own competition. Every day I strive to be better than I was the day before. Talk to you. Talk to you. So, as black women, we get caught up in this whole hype of she my competition. Mm-hmm. But people don't realize we greater together. You ain't my competition. We can collab on some stuff and be great together at the end of the day. And so once we get out of this competitive mindset, because what happens is a lot of time, other people outside of us turn us against each other. And if we start coming together and using your skills and your knowledge and your resources and your network, we can do so much better together. And so I had to get out of that mentality that it's one black woman for every single job mm-hmm. or one black woman at the top for every single spot. But I always put myself in the mindset, we better together. You ain't my competition. You my sister. Let's get there together and collaborate. And so now I wake up every morning and to be honest with y'all, it ain't cliche or none of that. I'm just trying to be better than the person I was the day before. That's I'm my own competition at the end of the day. I'm just trying to be better than the person I was the day before. Yeah. And it's not it's not a competition to me. I just I want to see everybody win. Yeah. Like I want to see everybody win. And you mentioned something earlier, Jay, about providing other opportunities for other people to get on. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Like we need to be winning together. First off, it ain't fun to travel alone. It's not. It's not. It's not. Like, so if you only, you know what I'm saying, 100,000 there, th- millionaires, 100,000 know, all of that, out there. like, the reality is, if everybody else in your circle is only 50,000, what you said? Yeah, let's talk yeah. about how fun it's not. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I agree wholeheartedly. So but I was talking to one of my students about that today. He was like, why don't you just want to, you know, try to take over Nike? And I'm like, why would I want to take over something that's already established? No. Like, it's not about taking over. It's about making your own. Absolutely. Because you, and when you try to take over, you got to live by certain rules. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once, once I figured that you can't serve two masters and I decided what I wanted to do. Absolutely. I create my own avenue. Absolutely. So I create my own opportunities so I can Absolutely. get back to y'all so y'all can create more avenues for the people who you mm-hmm. serve. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's about because it's, 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 a, it's a pyramid scheme when you think about it. But it's a it's a different one because it's actually a positive one that actually gonna breed more opportunities for everybody to grow. Yeah. And now nobody has an excuse. No. Mm-hmm. There's no, no more excuses of why you don't have certain tools because you have certain knowledge now. Yeah. The world is moving extremely fast. All that yeah, new technology yeah. that you have that we don't have. I tell them every day. If y'all can post one picture on Instagram to get thousands of likes. Yeah. Just think if you have your own clothing line. Yeah. If you get a thousand likes. At least a hundred people might buy it. Absolutely. For twenty dollars. Yeah. And now, what I realized last week, parents still buy their clothes from at least zero to eighteen. Yeah. So if it costs cheaper than Jordan, 
you're mm-hmm. gonna get more. Yeah. 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 So that means you have an audience that you can actually get rich off of. And now everybody moved to YouTube. After three weeks, I watched YouTube just to see how I can build my own. Yeah. Because I have one, but it's just like, okay, how can I do it better? Man, these kids are out here doing any and everything. everything. Crazy. And it's like, if I can't do any and everything for my brand, like you said yeah. earlier, yeah. then you don't want it. No. You don't want it. No. You have to act to ask for your own brand. Yes. And you, so then you me and Dan talked about the podcast. I'm like, you know what? When I started this brand, it was me to get back in front of the camera. Yeah. And ain't nobody going to sell my brand like I'm going to sell it. And yeah. vice versa about yeah. his. Yeah. So it's just like you have to sacrifice certain things to get where you want to get. Mm-hmm. And so, but, and like how you want to be remembered, that's a real one. Yeah. Yeah. So you are a real one. Yeah. Right. I try. Ain't waver. So. Well, the second one, I'll see, and y'all kind of touched on that just then, but you know what I'm saying? It, it comes so full circle. That's how you know you're in sync already. Okay. Everybody want to be a boss. Not enough folks trying to be a leader. So, a boss has the title, but a leader has the people. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing for me. People get so caught up on that whole, like, I got to be a boss. I got to be a boss. A boss acts in the best interest of just the employees and themselves, while a leader acts in the best interest of everybody. Mm-hmm. I want to be a boss. I want to be a leader. The great people that you remember today weren't bosses. They were leaders. Mm-hmm. You talking about today is Martin Luther King's birthday, and we're going to observe it and celebrate it mm-hmm. on Monday. But Martin Luther King, he wasn't a boss, he was a great leader. Yeah. When you talk about the Shirley Chisholms, when you talk about the Coretta Scott Kings, the Malcolm X's, they were leaders, they were not bosses. Like, it wasn't about, you know, being at the head of somebody's business, it was about acting in the best interest yeah. of the people. And if we get out of that mindset of wanting to be the boss and get in a mindset of leading and acting in the best interest of the people, we'll be so much better as a people. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, that's what I meant about that. There it is. <laughs> that's a fact. Um, so do you have any future goals that you want to achieve? This mm-hmm. it, cause this 2020, and I I'll tell somebody this just feels like a new century to me. Mm-hmm. Anything is possible right yeah. now. Yeah. Because we just started over. Mm-hmm. We started over, your slate is clean. What would you like to imprint on this new canvas that we call, you know what I'm saying, 2020? So 2020 for me is, so I came out last year with Hey Little Black Girl, It's Your World, and I focused on millennials and generation, I I focused on millennials. And so now I'm trying to focus on the babies. Mm. So I'm trying to go next after that. And so one of the big things is I go into the schools and I speak to the students. And so one of the things I want to do this year and you know, you can't tell everybody your goals and dreams. Yeah. But yeah. I have some really unique things in place right now for the babies. Mm-hmm. So when you talking empowering, hey, little black girl, I need hey, little black girl to open up her own this and, I mean, you know, see images of her se- herself and speak positivity over her life at five years old and eight years old. So I got two things coming out for my little black girls. And then I have one more thing coming out for uh, my millennials this year. So I'm on it. And then Black History Month is coming up. So you know I got to get on that. Um, But that's my biggest thing this year. I'm working with some um, suppliers and trying to see um, what I can do for my babies. But those two things, I'm definitely on it for them this year. So... So that's you my got goal. A, a, a event that's about to happen or anything right now coming up. Book signing. You, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm in. Oh, oh. Said she touring. Oh, you know what I'm saying? she touring soon. Oh, so my next big thing is I'll be in Kansas City next week. I always love. Um, I'm speaking for the Kaufman Foundation, and so I am their MLK keynote speaker. Okay. I always love talking about the Amazing movement. Event. When I when I tell you I love talking about the movement and talking about Dr. King's legacy. So that's my next biggest thing. So next week I'll be in Kansas City, the Black Achievers Society, along with the Kaufman Foundation. I'll be the MLK keynote speaker. But as far as like events, events coming up that I'm doing, not so much. But my biggest thing are those three things that I'm going to push uh out this year and then i'm trying to get into real estate like that's a market people ain't talking about that that's a whole nother ball game Mm -hmm. like i'm trying to get in real estate though to the point that i need to be able to provide something for those who are on low low income Mm -hmm. i got so many of my students who get their ssi check and they make it seven hundred dollars a month but they paying six hundred dollars in rent i need to be able to provide some type of something to say here is some housing at half that cost for you to be able to live because you want to like how you living like you paying six hundred dollars rent and you getting a seven hundred dollar check 
So that's the market that me and my girls are trying to break into to have friends that you own something with. So okay. that's 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 my biggest yeah. thing. Okay. Like if we can travel together, we can put our money together well, and rich. go well, and and yes, yeah. we just talked about that. Like we spent a grip when we went to Vegas. Imagine Jeez. if we all put this money Jeez. together. Exactly. <laughs> a grip. Bro, you know what you're from as a A grip. Yeah, so oh, that's what I'm trying to do this year. I'm trying to make it happen. We're gonna make it happen. Stay on prayer. We're gonna make it happen. Yeah. Uh do you have any questions for us? Um, what made y'all start the podcast? Like, I love this idea. This is so y'all. Like, I love it. It's to, about time. Yeah, man. To be completely honest, I give Jay this one for the most part. Mm -hmm. Like, he know, like, I'm still reserved. I'm still crazy reserved. Like, mm -hmm. so... If I'm coming out or I'm doing something like it's an event that I'm like, nah, like I feel a different energy. They genuinely want me there. Like I gotta show up for my people. Absolutely. Outside of that, like I be at work, I be focused on, you know what I'm saying? Being a father, I be focused on mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And yeah, the brand itself, like Jay, Jay was like, bro, you got something. People saying you got something, like you gotta put some stuff out there. You gotta just stay in it. And what we talking about, it end up aligning. And we naturally, genuinely be, <laughs> just be talking. Like, we be talking yeah. real stuff. And we was like, bro, we should be catching this stuff yes. on film. Because yes. we are in our raw moments. And we genuinely still be talking, like, real talk, business talk. Like, hey, what's the move for today? What we got planned? All right, look, I don't think you should do that. Like, <laughs> I think you should do this. And genuinely, he just was helping me, like, come out of the shell. Saying, like, bro. You've been doing a lot of stuff already. You just been in behind the scenes. Like you need to just come up, and that way people are showing your face a lot more into what you're doing and how it's going. And then from there, like the content has been literally aligning, and we preaching the same stuff with people. That's like, hey man, like y'all look like y'all doing it. Y'all, y'all, y'all traveling. Y'all doing this, and I want to do it. And we like, like, bro, like you absolutely can. Yeah. Like Jay was like, Tiffany, like you can. Like when we. Come, like you know what I'm saying, and we've been planning and we've just been on business and letting the fun that naturally happen happen versus planning Absolutely. for fun. Like, all right, when we go here, we gotta hit the strip club, we gotta do this. We like, all right, so listen, we, hit the strip club. we now we still hit them, but we plan for business first. We sit there and be like, all right, you want to look like That's us up. when you travel, you better, you better have something. Yeah, they have something lined up. But if you ain't in the strip club promoting what you got, because they ain't coming to they ain't, they ain't, they ain't coming to work in the in the thong and the, all of that. Them, like, what you coming them. in? You coming in this sweat your sweatsuit? Yeah, you, yeah. You need to be. You do yourself a favor. We just living. Like, come on. Oh yeah. Everywhere you go, you have to be willing to push and sell your brand. Your brand. I don't care where I go. If I go to church, I don't go. I don't care if I go to the strip club. I don't care if I'm at work. You got to be pushing your brand. Yeah, I'm telling you, if I'm in a strip club, I'm like, sis, you need some inspiration. You need yeah, some empowerment, some uplift. I got these books in my trunk. <laughs> what do you think? Hey, look. Okay. And, then, and then they wonder how you got there. Correct. And it's just like, I've been putting my work in. I've been, I've been working. networking. Yes. I've been responding back. Yes. I've been reaching out, but people don't reach yes. out to me. Exactly. That's like the follow up, mm -hmm. you know? But also, but my quality has been what I've been telling you what it is. Exactly. And but also, but also the reason why we started this podcast, I'm, I got, I'm hot. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've been lucky. I've always been hot, and mm -hmm. it's time for me to actually grab that bottle. You know yes. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, why am I running from it? Yes. I can't run from Tasha. Always been calling me a superstar. Yes. And I'm just like, let's do it. Yes. So I, I got my nose because I lost my nose ring. I woke up. I was drunk one night. Like it has happened much. to me four times, so yeah. I know. <laughs> so I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna hit another one. You know what I'm saying? My, my other one uh, appears probably next week. But you know, so that's why I decided. I'm like, why not? You know, yeah. like, like who's gonna stop me at this point mm -hmm. in time? Like Ghost been saying on on power, who can? Nobody can stop me. No. Nope. Only myself. Only you. And so it's just like, but that's a certain type of knowledge you get in a certain type of training. You, you know, yeah. but. Um, but learning that is just like I'm unstoppable. So I just keep okay. I did my own shoes. I don't know nobody made their own shoes. No. I made my own watches. I don't know nobody made their own watches. Yep. So why not do a podcast? Yeah. And it's just like the way that I knew. I didn't know a lot of people were going to be as receptive. Man, absolutely. Like they just Man. yeah, well, I do it. Yeah, I do it. And it's just like we are booked up literally. Like, so now yeah. when people want to, they, they, hey, can I be on a podcast? You really have to email me because we booked mm -hmm. up, and you have to tell us why you deserve to be on the podcast yeah. because this podcast just ain't for just. 
surface level conversation. Yeah. You act that you actually have to have experience yeah. and di- divest time into certain type of experiences to be able to give back lessons. Yeah. Because what you gave us today, niggas, <laughs> you you went you went jogging, you was running. <laughs> this is yeah. It's four hundred straight. Yeah. And it's like that type like learning what you have takes a lot of endurance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are endurable. Yeah. Like this new generation and generations before and some of us. They're not durable no. for just one crash. No. Mm-hmm. Like once no. they once me, they get hit, me. they're told. That's they it. They're done. That's no issue. No, 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 no You don't even think about how to get out. No. And it's like, how do you think you can build anything or be free mm-hmm. without getting punched in the face? Yes. Mm-hmm. Punched in the gig. You yeah. know what I'm saying? In the gut. So it's just like, that's one thing I don't understand. Just hearing from all sides because older they the older people they still still think things are supposed to be given to them. Like yeah. in reparation. They're never coming. Never. They're never coming. Never. Let's just talk I deal with reality. They're never, never coming. If they never. do come, it'll be a hundred years. Never. And people ain't gonna mind. Mm-mm. Nope. And and they have to get past this racism. They're like people wanna be sensitive now to things that don't take all that. Yeah. Like some things, okay, I should have never said that nine years ago. But mm-hmm. I'm that's not me now. Yeah. So it's just like I, people don't realize though, you can change. You can change. You can grow. I remember one of my good friends, my good friends, Bruce Franks Jr. Mm, yep. Favorite superhero. Oops, yep. When you talk yep. about somebody, and that's why when you ask the question of who would I work with, I have worked with him. Mm-hmm. And he is a superhero when I talk about superheroes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he always he always one of the things he always pushes is 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 being durable and being able to take those hits i just watch how people have crucified this man and this man has given so much to this city and it's so funny y'all because he nominated for this oscar man. and i'm so <laughs> proud of him and i literally I, I i messaged him the other day i said when they when they tried to bury you but forgot that you was a seed Woo. and he said Ooh. and he said come on with it i said when they tried to bury you when they thought when when they had no idea that you was a C. And yeah, it's no. just it's it's just so God. crazy. And yeah, so when I think about taking hits and being knocked down and getting back up and keep pushing, people like him are are the epitome of what that looks like and what that means. So I just yeah. I just I, I completely like uh understand where y'all coming from. I completely I commend y'all so much and I, I love y'all so much because I've always looked at y'all as little brothers. And little big brothers, to be honest, and I always have said little big brothers because y'all keep me protected, y'all keep me together. No matter what it is, I can just, y'all good. But another thing that I pride y'all on so much is y'all are the epitome of collaboration over competition. Like, if one of y'all going, the other person going with you. Like, we, you going to this pop-up shop, we going together. Like, so how, how are you all getting other black men on board with what y'all got going on how y'all how y'all dropping them gems and passing them out or what will that look like if you feel like you haven't been there yet so i i talk to my neos because now yes. like they didn't know that we going through a whole nother i've never seen so many people that want to be entrepreneurs like my kids and my niece and my nephew mm-hmm. they are doing any and everything and taking mm-hmm. off and all i do is just keep them motivated and you know most mm-hmm. people like we we talked uh to this one guy we did this church uh, event, and he was like, "We cost this much to get my plug number." I talked to my dad. I don't, I don't charge them for no, no. knowledge because they put me on stuff. No. And it's like they, I give them the plug that I know, and, I, and vice versa. And I keep it, and I keep them because when you go through this whole struggle, it's hard. It's yeah. hard, and you, you gonna get knocked down. You gonna get sent the wrong stuff. You gotta figure out to send it off. You gotta figure out to do th- other things. So I just keep on saying. Hey, be strong because yeah. you gonna go through the bullshit, but you gonna make it out. And once you make it out, you know you can go through it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. If that's the bare minimum, you can make it right back off. Absolutely. So that's how I keep people motivated and just tell them who, who gonna beat your ass. Yeah. If you do what you wanna do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's my mindset. Yeah. I mean, genuinely, me and Jay, we, we talked about this before. Like competition wise, we we never see each other's competition. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because it's actually nobody. Like nobody. You know what yeah. I mean? But like, cause we genuinely in our own lane, and when we go out and travel, like we've realized we genuinely do work better together. Absolutely. When, like, cause if I step away, 
I know Jay can genuinely articulate and he will sell my stuff as hard as he would sell his own. Absolutely. Like, it's like vice versa. Like, we're a part of it. So, like, when we already invested into what we do, when we sitting there and we planning these trips, it's like, all right, so who got the front? Like, a lot of times it's like, hey, if I got the front end, you got the back end, right? Mm -hmm. Bet. Cool. I get paid this day. You get paid this day. Bet. If I can handle this in the front, you got. And I like it's always like, bro, we good, we yeah. good. Yeah. You know what I mean? If we not good, we know how to make it work. Make it work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and bringing other people in, I think one of the dopest experiences was of just like creating a, a different energy in a person was the shoot with Susan. Mm -hmm. Not gonna lie to you, mm -hmm. because yeah, that was yeah, Florida. So we went to uh, Florida. We did uh, USF uh, Bull Market. Mm -hmm. We launched there. Um, then we end up doing oh she's a design studio showcasing showcasing makes makes crazy Danny B studio. Danny B studio shout out to Danny B man Jose oh man and with the photo shoot with Susan it was like that was that was energy that was happening of us not even knowing how impactful we were being yeah to somebody that needed like. Confidence, like yeah. you know what I'm saying. Jim was just at that point. It was like it wasn't even the fact that like you can't shoot. Like you just need confidence to own that. Like yo, you can do this. Yeah. <laughs> and bringing that type of people in, and then when we do the events, like we be trying to bring vendors out. Like hey, you trying? Like hey, we brought uh, the only so far the only jeweler I know in that event. You know, okay, gold mine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that was dope. Artist wise, we giving people their first times on stages and performing in front of people. And just like building a numerous amount of brands together to where it's like, yo, if we put together an event, y'all show up, like just come get the love and catch the energy. But it, yeah. it makes people put their money where their mouth is. Facts. And Facts. You doing all that talking. Yeah. All right, let's, let's see. Because I know my shit going to be nice. Yeah. I work hard. Facts. Yeah. Now let's see what you're going to do. Yeah. And I'll give you the stage too. I mean, yeah. So either you're going to succeed or yeah. my people that's out here that yeah. you're out here. And that's why I bring up love and hip hop to all my students. You, can, you see how everything turns into a fight everywhere? Yeah. You can either. Make the shit uh, a successful situation Absolutely. and learn how to back out and perform like you're supposed mm -hmm. to, or you can call the scene and then not be able to go nowhere. nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. That, and just in business, you have to be able to take care of business and deliver at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know. And so, that's all we have for you, man. And we appreciate you being part of the podcast. Hey, like, share, subscribe. To man, yes. We just live. Can you give me a what's your, what's your handle? So I'm Freddie Love 88 on Instagram, Freddie, F-R-E-D-D-I-E-L-U-V-88. You can also follow me on Instagram at BGMW2018. That's the name of my LLC, Black Girl Millennial World. Damn. Black Girl Millennial World. So that's what I am on Instagram, on Facebook, Black Girl Millennial World, or for Drinker S. McGlown. Go to Amazon and get my book. Get the book. Get the get book. Get my uh, book. Get the book. Get my 